Hello. Welcome to another Paddox video. In our consulting department, it is a fact proven over and over again that exclusive use areas are one of the most misunderstood legal concepts in sectional title schemes. Even though most schemes have registered or rule-based exclusive use areas. As an owner in a sectional title scheme, do you have access to and use of a balcony, a garden, a parking bay, a storeroom, the list goes on and on. If you do, then we invite you to join us at our next half-day UCT Exclusive Use Areas in Sectional Title Schemes workshop. This workshop will cover all the key issues relating to exclusive use areas in sectional title schemes. The workshop is also aimed at trustees who are the elected representatives of the owners in a sectional title scheme and who are responsible for doing all things reasonably necessary for the enforcement of the rules and for the control, management and administration of the common property. Unfortunately, trustees like owners often have little or no understanding of the extensive legal requirements involved in the creation or registration of exclusive use areas, its legal nature, physical and financial responsibilities. If you're an owner, a trustee, an employee, or the appointed managing agent of a body corporate, or an estate agent specializing in the sales of units and sectional title developments, we urge you to download the information pack and register for the next workshop. As an introduction to what we'll be talking about in the workshop, let's take a look at the exclusive use areas either registered or created in terms of rules in sectional title schemes. Let us first look at how an exclusive use area is registered. In terms of Section 27 of the Sectional Titles Act, the developer, when making an application for the opening of a sectional title register and the registration of the sectional plan of the body corporates, may impose a condition by which the right to the exclusive use of a part or certain parts of a common property delineated for this purpose on the sectional plan is conferred upon the owners of sections. The developer then cedes this right to the exclusive use of any part of the common property to an owner of a unit within the scheme by the registration of an material deed in favour of that specific owner. Should a developer cease to be a member of the body corporate before the session of this right, the right to an exclusive use area, still registered in the name of the developer, will vest in the body corporate free from any obligation. Should the body corporate wish to delineate and register the rights of exclusive use, the members of the body corporate will need to authorise this process by passing a unanimous resolution. The body corporate may then instruct an architect or a land surveyor to apply to the Surveyor General for the delineation on the amending sectional plan of extension of any part of the common property for the exclusive use by an owner of a section. The body corporate will transfer this right by the registration of an material deed. This registered right to an exclusive use area is deemed to be a real right to immovable property, which can be transferred or bonded. How is an exclusive use area created in terms of the rules? In terms of Section 10.7 of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, a developer or the body corporate later on may make management or conduct rules which confer rights of exclusive use and enjoyment of parts of the common property upon members of the body corporate. In terms of Section 10.8 of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, these rules will include a layout plan to scale, on which it is clearly indicated the locality of the distinctively numbered exclusive use areas and the purpose for which these exclusive use areas may be used. A schedule will also be included, indicating to which owner the exclusive use area is allocated. The management or conduct rule, whichever was amended, along with the, la the layout plan and schedule of allocation, once approved by the members via special or unanimous resolution, must be submitted to the Community Schemes Ombud Service for examination and approval and will only come into operation on the date of such approval. A question we are often asked is whether contributions are payable on exclusive use areas. Yes, they are. In terms of Section 31C of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, the trustees of the body corporate must require that the owner of a section who is entitled to the right of exclusive use of a part of a common property, whether such right is registered or conferred by the body corporate's rules, to make an additional contribution to the body corporate's funds as estimated necessary to defray the costs associated to that area of common property. 
In terms of Section 3.1.L of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, the body corporate is responsible to maintain the common property, including exclusive use areas. Whereas in terms of Section 13.1.C of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, an owner must just keep their exclusive use area in a clean and neat condition. If you are interested in attending this workshop, download the information pack or contact our office. I look forward to seeing you at our next workshop.